everybody. Here we are with chapter number five, trig graphs and equations. I've split this chapter into eight lessons, including the review, and I'm going to start with something called radians. So, what is a radian? Well, if I asked you to go and measure an angle for me, you might come back and tell me the angle is, for example, 45 degrees because we measure angles in degrees. How many degrees in a complete turn? That's right, there are 360. And way back around 500 years BC, when Mr. Ross was a wee boy, you had the Babylonians, and they were really the first to divide a circle into 360 parts. But why 360? Well, there's three reasons really. One is that 360 is a number that you can divide easily by other numbers without a remainder. You can divide it by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12. Also 360 is roughly the number of days it takes the Earth to go around the Sun. And the Babylonians also like to work with base 60. They were the ones that came up with our method for telling the time. There's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So for those reasons, 360 seems like a nice number to use. However, you had brainy people, smart people, mathematicians, just like Fatima, who wanted something that was a wee bit more logical. They didn't just want a nice number. So a few hundred years ago, we came up with another way of measuring angles. And this is it. Imagine if you've got a circle. If you have the radius of that circle drawn in, imagine if you took that radius and then you bent it around the circumference and then joined it up with another radius to the centre of the circle. You will then form an angle. And this angle that you form is known as one radian. It doesn't matter if the circle is tiny like a five pence piece, a really big like the London Eye, one radian always works out to be 57.2958 degrees. But why just stop with one radian? Let's see how many radians we can fit inside the circle. So over here, if you put the radius around the outside, let's say we get another radius, another radius, another, 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 you'll see that we can fit around six and a bit radiuses or radii which means then that there are six and a bit radians inside the circle. Let's think about the circumference formula. C equals pi d. So the diameter is just two radiuses, two radii. So you could swap d with two r. So your circumference formula is just C equals two pi r. And that means you'd have two pi radiuses in your circle. So it's the number of times the radius can fit around the circumference. And 2 pi is 6.28. You're just doubling 3.14. What this means then is if you've got 2 pi radii around the circle, you'd also have 2 pi radians in the circle. So this means there are 2 pi radians in the circle, the 360 degrees. Uh, therefore, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. What you can then say is if you divide both sides by 2, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So when you're working with degrees, you've got this wee circle, you've got the number that's written in degrees. When you work with radians, a lot of the time that is based on pi, and 180 degrees is pi radians. Why use radians? Well, later on we'll see that they can make formulas and gradient calculations easier, but right now what you've got to do is you have to change between degrees and radians. And I'll do a few examples with that. So, changing between degrees and radians. Always remember, the thing that you need to remember, is that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So to change, first of all, from degrees to radians. Let's do some examples of that. First thing you want to do is you want to take the number of degrees, you would multiply it by pi, that's bringing in pi, and then you would divide by 180. So I'll do two examples with that. So example one, 90 degrees. Let's change 90 degrees from degrees to radians. So the first thing is you want to multiply by pi, so you'd have 90 pi, and then you divide by 180. So we end up with 90 pi, 
over 180. Covering up pi, we've really got 90 over 180, but you know 90 over 180 just simplifies to one half, so you'd end up with pi over 2. A few of you probably wondering, well, you know that's 90 degrees because you've got the wee degrees symbol here, but how do we show radians? Well, angles are always measured in radians unless the degrees symbol is shown. So when you're writing it in radians, you don't need to put any units after it's taken for granted that that is written in radians. Let's try another example. Change to radians. This time, 27 degrees. So you want to do the same thing, multiply by pi, divide by 180. So you're bringing it in pi, so 27 pi, and then put it over 180. Again, try simplifying that as far as you can. Both 27 and 180 will divide by 9. So dividing them by 9 gives you 3 over 20. So we'd have 3 pi over 20. That doesn't simplify anymore, so you would leave it as 3 pi over 20. What you could also do, though, is on your calculator, you could do 3 times 3.14, that's just pi, and then divide by 20, and you'd end up with 0 0.47. What you tend to do, though, is you tend to leave it written with pi, and you write it as a fraction. So it's usually best to give a radian measure in a fraction as a multiple of pi, rather than as a decimal. Okay, you're normally wanting the exact value. This is rounded, this is exact. Let's go back the way this time. So again, change it between degrees and radians. But this time, we want to change from radians back to degrees. So to do this, we just do the opposite. This time, you multiply by 180 and you divide by pi. So we're getting rid of the pi symbol. So example three, change two degrees. We have three pi over four. Do the same thing, multiply by 180, divide by pi. So if you do that, I'm going to write this out slightly differently, so I've got 3 pi over 4. I want to multiply that by 180, so I'm bringing the 180 up to the top, and divide by pi, so I'm putting the pi on the bottom. You can do this different ways. You could always do 3 times 180, and then you could get whatever that is, and you could divide it by 4, or you could start cancelling out just now. What I'm thinking is that 180 and 4 both divide by 4, so you could do that. Divide the 4 by 4 and you get 1, divide 180 by 4 and you get 45, and also you've got a pi in the top and the bottom, so we're multiplying by pi and dividing by pi, so pi will also cancel out. If you do that then, you'd end up with 3 times 45 in the top, giving you 135, and the bottom you just, just have 1, so divide by 1, you don't need to write it, so that's just 135 degrees, and don't forget the degrees sign. Let's try another one, example 4, change to degrees. Once again, we've got 8 pi over 5. Do the same thing if you want to change 2 degrees. You want to multiply by 180 and divide by pi. So we've got 8 pi over 5. 180 goes on the top. Pi goes on the bottom. Again, you can do it different ways. I would always think, right, well, we've got pi in the top, pi in the bottom, so they would cancel out. You could always do the 180 and the 5, they both divide by 5, or as I said, you could do 8 times 180, and then divide by 5. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm going to multiply them first this time. So 8 times 180 is 1440, divided by 5, and you end up with 288 degrees. When you are working with degrees and radians, a lot of the time you will have um, angles like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and these are really easy to write in radians. You know 30 degrees is a sixth of 180, so it will be a sixth of pi radians. Or 45 degrees is a quarter of 180, so it's pi over 4. 60 degrees is a third of 180, so it's pi over 3. So these are ones that you really need to know. These ones come up quite a lot. Again, leave them as exact values. You could also round them if you were asked to, to so many decimal places, by just swapping pi with 3.14, 159, or the pi button on your calculator. But these ones come up quite a lot, and you do need to, to know them. There's a few more here. Maybe it looks a wee bit confusing, but if you start off with a zero, then you've got 90, 180, 270, and then 360. So you've got your complete turn. On the inside, you've got degrees, 
So 30, well 30 is a sixth of 180, so it's just pi over 6. 45 is a quarter, so it's pi over 4. 60 degrees is pi over 3, it's a third of 180. 90 degrees is a, uh, 180 over 2. So again, you've got this circle here with some of the common uh, angles and degrees and radians. You might want to take a picture of this, it might help you out. Give some of these questions a shot though, switching between degrees and radians. If you're unsure of anything, ask me. Good luck, have fun.